Hello everyone and welcome back to another weekly recap of the VODs that happened over the last weekend. We had some banger matches. People are saying it was one of the best weekends of Overwatch League. Some say ever. I don't know if that's true. We've had some great weekends, but there were definitely some great matches. We're going to look at Atlanta Reign taking on the Houston Outlaws today. This was probably the best match, at least in terms of like quality of gameplay that happened over the weekend. Atlanta Reign... They were 10-0, 13-match win streak heading into this series. They looked unbeatable, unstoppable in a lot of respects, especially in the Sombra meta. While the Houston Outlaws, they just came off of an 0-2 weekend, lost to the Boston Uprising, lost to the Florida Mayhem. So we were questioning Outlaws fall from grace. Are they going to be able to compete at this top level anymore? And they responded in a big way with this matchup. So I don't want to speak too much to what happens, but let's just get into it. Um... It's it's going to be a good one. There's probably the two best teams that we have in the league right now going toe-to-toe -to -toe once again. In the in the midseason madness, Houston Outlaws couldn't really hold a candle to the Atlanta Reign. Atlanta were just by far the better team, uh, and it wasn't close, unlike the winners' finals that we did see. But this time, Outlaws coming to play, really finding a big advantage playing these Ramatra rush compositions, having the edge in that respect. All right, first first point control center, which you expect both teams to play the uh, Ramatra. Some teams have, like, this weekend been playing a lot of Reinhardt, like on Lee Jung Tao, like Florida Mayhem and some other teams like that. Stalker taking down Happy is a pretty big pick. That's going to be a lot of the damage gone from the Outlaws and the Shoe Falling. That's just the end of that one. Dong Hack just punching people to death. All right, these guys are just a little bit too loud. I don't want to listen to Matt's voice as we talk about this series. Stalker gets another one, and that's it. Those are huge picks. Stalker's, like, flexibility is just being what? Okay, Chad, I actually have a question. You know, let's have an interactive video on this one. Do you guys think Stalker is the MVP so far this season? No, no, lip. No, fielder. Yes, lip. There's a lot of lips. It's a lot of lips. I guess it's fair. You know, lip, lip Sombra has been, like, Probably the most important piece of the Atlanta Reign success, but I don't know, man. Stalker's numbers are kind of cracked. Merit is? Okay, ban that person. Fielder, it could be Fielder. At this point, you could do Fielder. I just think it's a lot harder to give it to a support player. You know, I'm a support bias kind of guy. I could get behind this kind of narrative. Wow, Houston Outlaws drop the Amp Matrix and just take the point for free. Oh, God, that's a good Blizzard and Wall, though. Fearless is gonna stay. No, not a lab. Wow, the, the counter blizzard as well from Pelican. Everyone is just having a bad time if you're a tank. Violet? 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 Gets four? Okay, okay. That was a good sound barrier as well from Violet. If he doesn't drop that barrier at the right time, Fearless dies a lot quicker. And for all we know, Donghack gets out of the blizzard himself. It was cleanup. Oh, it's always a cleanup. No Lucio gets a 4k that's like purely them. You just don't do enough damage to pull that off. But hey, that's still cleanup that no one else was doing. Down to Violet. I'm about that. Oh my god. Donghat goes way too deep. What the fuck was that? Let's actually go back and watch this. Look at how far Donghat goes. He just goes zug zug. Runs into the back line trying to kill Shu. Lamp goes down and he just dies for it. Lamp's a little late from Fielder. I don't blame Fielder for that one. That's that's That was a little a little too spicy for my liking. That's my rookie of the year. <laughs> that's another interesting question that like everyone's, you know, we're getting closer towards the end of the season. We've been starting to ask the questions like, is Donghak Rookie of the Year? He's probably been the most successful rookie this season, but does he deserve the Rookie of the Year title? Because he's been surrounded by the best players in the league, in the best meta. So has Donghak really been putting up that performance? His lip murders Happy through the Ant Matrix. It's a, you, you just need a body shot. Donghak's getting low. Oh, they can keep him up. It's a good blizzard. Look at how badly that splits everyone up. Unfortunately, oh, Donghak did get frozen at the very end there. Lip kills Pelican. Stalker kills Shu. That Stalker kill into Shu is, uh, is the most important one. And that's going to be a flip back for Atlanta Rain. 
I mean, the first kill from Lip is Fuck it, give it to Knife. We are not giving Knife Rookie of the Year chat. He's He's been around for literally one weekend. We've seen him play two matches and people are like, fuck it. <laughs> My rookie. My Vegas Eternal. If he keeps it up, no. I don't think there's any world that it would ever be Knife, in my opinion. Unless Knife... Whoa, nice boop. Blizzard goes wide because of that, but it still split them up. Dude, Stork has been finding some big picks. Like, he hasn't been finding most of the picks. That's primarily been Violet. And Lisp has been finding some big ones as well, but Stork has been finding all the openings. What about Spectra? I think Spectra... Any any player that only... Whew, any player that only plays half the season, it's hard to justify giving them... A, a, a title, right? They only played half of the season. They would have to pop off in playoffs. And I actually don't know when we're planning on voting for MVP and Rookie of the Year. Some seasons, I think we've... I think primarily we've done it before the playoffs have even happened. Fearless Annihilation. He's, he's, not, he's not taking that much damage, while Donghak on the other side is, like, isolated super hard. Donghak just didn't get as much value from the Annihilation. Donghak really struggled in this first round. I actually think that might have been the big difference that we saw from both of these teams because Sorka and Lip were playing well, but I think Donghak... Oh, wow. Wait, Annihilation. I don't think it really matters. Yeah, I think Donghak made some pretty crucial mistakes in that round. So, Castle, we have 82% saying no to Stalker MVP. That is a lot higher than I was expecting. I think that is... I think there should be more votes for Stalker. I understand Lip. I would honestly be down for voting for Lip because Lip's been so good for so long, right? Like, Lip has, you know, you could have even given him MVP in 2021 in some respects, right? So. I'm on the Fielder train. I just don't know if you can give it to Fielder. Right, if Fielder has a, a world-class back end of the season, especially if, if Fielder picks up the new hero and just absolutely dominates on it, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. But right now, I don't think Fielder has been as valuable as Lip or Stalker. And that's probably just DPS bias. But it's hard to know. So Atlanta Rain, Donghak, going over to his signature ball, Stalker on the Farah. They don't want to take the Reinhardt duel on the point. This is, a, this is a gamble. We've seen a lot of teams trying to do this, like Farah. You know, you just put out... Oh, that's a bad... That's another bad death by Donghak. Good res by Chio. But we've seen a lot of different teams. Nice Rocket. Uh, really trying to play the Farah and just sort of... You know, punishing teams for playing this, like, Symmetra, Reinhardt, just, like, anchor on to the point. It... It has validity, but I feel like most of the time it ends up hurting teams more than it helps. Because if you don't win this fight, it's just so bad. Fortunately, they didn't lose the cap, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Are they going to swap? Rack, yes, thank you for the prime sub. How many fights does Fielder keep alive? By saying, hey, no, hey, we're, we're, all, we're all in agreement. Fielder fucks, right? Like, Fielder is the best flex support in the league this year. 100%. You're, you're not going to get any arguments from me. Do I believe that he has been more valuable than Stalker or Lip, though? I don't know. Does Atlanta have as much success? And this is probably the justification that a lot of people have why they would vote for Lip over Stalker, is I think if Atlanta didn't have Lip, the dominance wouldn't be as common. While I feel like the strength of the back line is both Chio and Fielder, not just Fielder. Like, I think Lip has been the most valuable player in the league in just the way that he plays the Sombra. Well, I, I think there are a lot of flex supports that, you know, Fielder's obviously the best right now, but I think there's, you could sub in another flex support in Fielder's said. You could put in a shoe, you could put in like, um, you could put in like a bunch of different flex supports. And I think they would still have that same level of like dominance. I guess Summer Tracer. And you don't exactly have the... Twilight, yeah. Backline here for the like, I, and as I said, I, I don't want this to feel like I'm discrediting either of them. Honestly, I think Chio, Fielder, Lip, and Stalker all have an MVP bid. Chio's the hardest to win, obviously, as a main support, but... I think you can make a justification for all of them. Uh, EMP might just be too good. Or at least, like, the hack. And that's, like... They just win that fight without having to use the EMP, which is huge, right? Like, a lot of players would have EMP'd here. They would have just like panicked, been like, Shu saw me, drop the EMP. But he recognizes, has the presence of mind. As soon as that nano comes through, they don't need it. And all of a sudden, like, they needed that. They're at 80% deficit right now on this night market. Now they have the freedom to win the next fight. 
so early, I think it might have just been, you know, to stay lip off. They didn't know that Don't Hack was going to come from the other way. So well done for Atlanta. Great little, uh, a great opportunity sort of uh, capitalization there, seeing an opening and taking advantage. I'm voting Chio. Hey, you're the hero we need, but don't deserve. Chio, Chio voters are like, whoa. Oh God, I, I, I thought that was the fuck. I thought that Chio was flanking there for a second. I, I lost track of who's who was coming from what spawn. Oh my God, dude, those bullets just like matrixed around lip. Once again, not going to use the EMP. He just realizes when and he does and doesn't need it. He might just EMP fearless though. Oh shit. The rest of his team kind of died. Violet also really needs to get off this Lucio. But I guess he now has the sound barrier. I guess that's also another reason why he hasn't needed to EMP the backline because if they have a Lucio, the Lucio is not going to be able to save them. He uses the sound barrier to save them. Oh, the hyper aggressive Houston Outlaws engage onto the backline of Atlanta. I love this play by the Outlaws. That was so smart. You understand Lip has the EMP. Don't give them the time to drop the EMP and set that shit up. Outlaw's trading is good here. They eventually EMP feelers. So Atlanta might win this fight. Whoa. Bio's dead. There's no way here. Chio still has the rally, which is the saving grace here for the rain. They have the ways to live through the Pelican EMP. Happy Pulse Monk could be huge. It could like, if he sticks Fielder, that's just like the end of the round. Violet finally gets to switch over to Brig. It's kind of interesting how the swaps happen. And this is pretty common where you have the Farah. One team go Farah against the Reinhardt. The Reinhardt has to switch to the dive to deal with the Farah. And then the Farah team eventually switches to the Winston as well. So it's a great way to get them into your fight. Oh, Pelican force a recall before he can EMP. Rain's getting a lot of space. Pelican's taking a really long time. They gotta be careful. They could lose a player here. If they lose a player before Pelican drops the EMP, that could be really bad. Oh, huge stick. Oh, great nano and rally. It's gonna cost both. If the outlaws can disengage into this and then EMP late. Oh, I don't know if that was late enough. It's still gonna be good, but. Oh, cheer fielder. Dude, they keep each other alive for so long. Oh, yeah, Chio's now... Oh, my God, field of kills Pelican. Dude, the backline of the rain is just unstoppable. Great sleep by Shu. Holy fuck. Good EMP by Lip, but the rally's already out for Violet, so they're actually going to have the sustainability. Oh, Shu dies through the rally. And the overhealth. Oh, this primal could be huge. Ah, oh, forces them off. Ooh, what a first map. That was real. I really like the way the Outlaws played. And this is something that we actually, um, I, I actually spoke about a lot uh, in their earlier series from the previous weekend. It felt like they weren't playing proactive. They weren't playing aggressive. And that's what Outlaws are great at. They, they take their advantages. They know when to push when it hurts. And they did that. When they had that sound barrier, they went aggressive, forced a lot of ultimates out of Atlanta. But in the previous weekend, like they weren't willing to force an objective. They weren't willing to go in with their advantages. Like the the one that sticks out the most is Route 66 when they, they're in a 5v4, but they weren't willing to drop from big L's to like punish the support line that was sitting underneath them. Maybe, you know, Junkbuck sort of whipped them into shape a little bit. But like, hey, stop playing like cowards. Get it together. So you love to see it for the Outlaws. Take the first map. Over to Midtown we go. Why is Lip so bright? It's because he's in a rave at all times. No, I skip it through. Lip plays on 500% brightness. He doesn't want to miss anything. Yeah, it's the key to winning. If you if you want to play as well as Lip, you actually have to turn your brightness to the max setting in Overwatch. And then you go to your monitor that you play on and you up the brightness of that as well to max. It's a, it's a tip that they don't want you guys to know, but trust me, that's how you find success as an Overwatch player. It allows you to see invisible targets. That's why Lip's so good at Sombra. Alright, both teams playing dive once again, but Lip's going to stick on the Sombra, Pelican on the Echo. This is something that the Outlaws have done a lot in the previous weekend. They'd prefer to play Pelican on the Echo rather than play the Sombra. 
I like this look against Atlanta Rain. If Sombra's not your specialty and you're going up against Atlanta, do something that you're comfortable on. And I feel like right now, depending on the map, Sombra or Echo are better, but I don't think either one is a massive detriment. So I like this play. Both teams charging up the nanos, 60% for both. Oh, big nade on the shoe. He just gets absolutely destroyed. Pelican follows. Yeah, you just lose that from there. That's such a big first pick whenever you can get that. If you don't have to use any ultimates, because you kind of need these ultimates to capture through the second point. You know, Lip and Stalker from one side, and then Dung Hack so patient, right? It, all it takes is just a little bit of a window of opportunity, and that's when the Atlanta range strike. All right, two pulse one. Pelican actually does switch over to the Sombra. I, I can. I wonder if they like Echo on just the first point because you can play around that train. You have better damage. You can punish the Winston for flying in. But in this, like, like it's very open. Like you don't have as many high grounds to play off of. Could maybe be awkward. Maybe he just doesn't want to get stuck on the Echo. And you see that Fearless maintains line of sight to shoot until he steps inside Don't Hack's bubble, but it's an annoying Big EMP. Oh, Happy just gets fucking murdered. Wait, was that the, uh, was that like, uh, did they just see one Tracer and just drop the EMP? Look at this. No way Lip EMP's happy here. That's a crazy EMP that he actually went for that. Like, that's just disrespectful to Happy. If Happy didn't like drop at that exact moment, that could have just like paid off for nothing. But hey, you know, that's what makes Lip great. And they're gonna, they're gonna close out for that. Feels like a classic limp, but that's what makes Lip do so many limp EMPs is because he goes for these like big brain, low percentage EMPs that the fact that he found that they won that team fight for what feels like free. They use one EMP and they kill Happy. And because of that, the rest of the outlaws crumble, right? And it only costs them an EMP. And they have so much confidence in Lip to be able to charge up another EMP that why not, right? Now, all of a sudden, Lip's in the back line again. If he finds a hack, can slowly start charging up. Actually, that was a pretty bad play by Lip. He didn't find any percentage. All right, let's see Pelican's EMP. Oh, good follow-up. Oh, Chia lived just long enough. That pillar was so well played. If Fearless went the other way around the pillar, Chia probably dies before he can do anything. But then he gets the rally. Then he gets the nano. He's unkillable at that point. And that cost, that cost Houston... A uh, that was an EMP, a Pulse Bomb, and a Primal Rage that gave them nothing. They got zero value out of any, all three of those ultimates, and Fearless is the one who gets punished. Rally for Bayard also punishes uh, Donghack, though, so... That's honestly not the worst thing in the world if you're the Outlaws. It costs you a lot of ultimates, but... Hey, yeah, you didn't lose. <laughs> you take those. Live with another EMP, though. Wow, Korean Liar is doing great. Oh, I love good Korean Liar. Chill and everything he knows from Liar. Oh, EMP on Happy. Dude, Happy is just having a bad time. Is Phil's going to go down? Dude, like, they make the EMPs look so easy. Like, why can't every other team do that? Like, you just EMPs and the team follows up. Maybe the Outlaw's not putting on enough pressure. They're trying to charge up, like, their ultimates. Just maybe not setting up or putting enough resistance against the rain because that just that just felt too easy happy is not happy some people indeed say he is sad at least on midtown just do better emps forehead okay <laughs> okay chat pelican is getting uh, pelican's actually keeping pretty good pace on these emps see if he's going to use it as quickly as we've seen lip using his because the longer that you take to use this emp the more time you're giving for Lip to charge up his own EMP. He's already up to 50% to another. So that for every like time that comes, like Lip, he, look at, he hacks Fearless another 20% on the board. There's the EMP on the back line. All right, that was a clean EMP from Pelican. I think if you're Atlanta here, if, as, especially if you can keep Filter alive and you don't stagger any more people, that's about as good as you can hope for. Because Lip's still charging an EMP, he gets his up. Then you just wait for Chio to respawn and come back. And now what did you lose? 15 seconds and you charge up your own EMP. So now you have an engagement tool. Boom. Goes back on to Happy. Yes, the recall off. So this was the first limp EMP that we've seen. At least on this map. So now Filter has the nano and they just use theirs on a Fearless. Throws on a Dong Hack. Oh, good bubble. That was a good disengage there from the Outlaws. 
It's been a lot of ultimates thrown with not as much follow-up. I wonder if that's a credit to the backlines or the dives kind of struggling. I think it's more of a credit to the backlines just dealing with it well. There's a lot of push and pull here that you don't see from like weaker teams playing the Tracer Sombra. Wait. Oh, wow. That, yeah, that was really good until they just got evaporated. And like Violet has a rally. He just hasn't really been able to do anything with it. Fields is going to prime as now Lips coming or a lot Pelican in EMP. I think they're probably going to look for Fearless or Happy with this EMP. You recognize that you're never really going to kill the backline with this one. Like, unless Lip can, like, find the Ana completely alone, he's just going to isolate a tank and dive the tanks. Oh, yeah, exactly like that. I like the idea of the counter EMP. It didn't pay off, though. Oh, oh no, 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 I don't like that. I like the rally. I would have liked if he rallied, went aggressive, and then popped the nano. They do punish Donghack for it, though. All right, never mind. Raid boss worked. If the outlaws had been able to... Uh, uh, sorry, the rain had been able to effectively disengage from that, that would have been a great fight for them. And now that, that's a good hold from the outlaws. So now neither team has really any ultimates. Everyone just kind of like press Q to little avail. Happy with the pulse bomb? Yeah, he could give them a lot of time. Force out Atlanta rain into last fight. If he can find a stick. You can see the Anna and the Brig. Oh, actually, they dropped. I thought they were going to stay on the high ground at least for a little bit longer. But I guess they're not afraid of an EMP. Happy playing incredibly passive. He's not even really looking for a pulse on the backliner. I wonder what he's trying. He's thinking with this pulse bomb. Because he doesn't seem like he's trying to go aggressive with it or find a, find a stick. Oh, lip. Oh, uh, Memp. What was the idea of that EMP? I think he was hoping to hit Pelican with it. Maybe he surprised them, but Pelican has any... Oh, he translocates as well. He would have hit Pelican. That's great heads up play by Pelican. Now Pelican just comes back and uses his own EMP. This could be huge. Oh, Donghack jumps as it... That was fortunate for Donghack as well. Great individual play. Donghack was already jumping away when it happened. Oh, if Fearless can't find value with this Nano... Oh, good play by Stalker. Oh, my yeet. Chu gets caught. And that uh, that's the Stalker effect. My MVP, chat. How good do you think Mayhem could do against Atlanta next week? We'll see. Uh, Mayhem play a very unorthodox style of playing this meta. They like to put merit on a lot of hit scans and they like to be flexible with the way they play things. I think Florida Mayhem probably has one of the better uh, like rushes and like different styles on different maps than a lot of these other teams. But we don't really know. Like, I, I think that's going to be a great match. It doesn't actually get it in the end. Yeah, that, that positioning, yeah, it was just tough for Violet. Getting caught out there. I think All right, let's jump it forward. Let's keep it going. Atlanta, the team in the defensive dive that look, they are really terrifying. Very, very good at taking the initiative and taking some calculator risks. Uh, Zess clears your shitty tier. Tracer player. Oh, bro. We got some APAC pilled players in... What? In uh, chat. Where's it going? Possibly. Oh. I think it was supposed to be a little bit further down. That's a good nade if it hits the stairs, but it just didn't. I think maybe a little bit further out, right? It would have landed right on top of Donghack, which uh, would have been tough. Builder got a pretty long wait list here of healing candidates, but able to keep both his Brig and Donghack up. But yeah. I like the Ana playing in this position more than the the on the stairs, because I feel like it's too easy to get dive, like we saw from Shu in the last one. The only issue that you run into is that you can't get split off by bubbles like you just saw. Yeah, they would have loved to have not lost Donghack. 
Flamingo just stays alive. Chio's really weak though. Dude, Stalker uh, just murders Fearless. And how does Chio stay alive? It was actually a big biotic grenade from Fielder towards that high ground that actually it doesn't give any of his uh, you know, allies the benefits of the, the nade. But Pelicans are beating Lip and EMP here. I wonder if the Rain are going to realize this is coming. They probably might. Do you go for the tank or you go for the backline again? I think you go for the backline in this situation because you know the Ana has Nano. Oh, very aggressive. EMP, I would say too aggressive of an EMP there from the from the rain, and then Pelican was just right there. It was like, oh shit, the front line is overextended. EMP just drops the EMP. Donghack and Lip just disappear. Oh, that was a little aggressive. From Violet. Violet, do not die. Challenge. All right, that was good. Oh, if Violet died there, that could have been really bad. Violet is raid boss right now, and he is just believing he is indestructible. Dude, Violet. If they don't get this, Violet just trolled. That was such a troll by Violet. I understand the rally. I understand the nano. I understand playing aggressive. My man just didn't know when to stop. That was that felt so greedy from Violet. He ends up getting up, popping his rally. He gets hit with a biotic grenade. They wanted to push in for that kill so bad. Because if he had just gone back to the point, they probably would have had an advantage. Uh, on the point, especially with how things were going there, it was going pretty decent for the outlaws. Only walk away with one tick there. And now you're getting bo near below. Oh, nice nade. Uh, Fierce is going to have to primal instantly. Oh, I'm surprised he threw that sleep so early. I think yeah, you would rather have your sleep for right now. Oh, he got the nano eventually. Medusa now is running out of options as EMP is going to have to be it. But of course, Lip is mirrored one as well. Happy almost gets torn to shreds as he drops to the low ground. Stalker's tracking and pressing. EMP. They finally get Fielder down, which is a huge pick. Can they punish Chio as well? I right, clean EMP on the back line. Lip EMP didn't find anywhere near as much value. What can they do here? Shu just wants to keep Fearless up. That's all he cares about right now. And he's building that nano pretty quickly. Two ticks. Donghack is lurking on the top floor. But he's been chased by Fearless. He's going to get the health pack. And you're going to have somebody here get a... Oh, kill. Lip gets Pelican? Whoa, wait, hey, yo. How do they not punish Donghack and Pelican dies? That's so bad. Well played by Donghack, honestly. He just, like, made himself a threat. And the outlaws just didn't know how to deal with it. And now they're going to have to get it done in desperation. <gasps> Happy just got fucking sent to the fucking nether realm. Oh, that's a huge nade. Is that actually gonna... That's That might save everything there for the outlaws. Oh, Shu! Dude, Shu deserves so much credit for this. Without Shu, I don't think they cap, cap this. Oh, Lady MP! Violet's won the back line! And Donghack is still going. Dude. Donghack has gone sicko mode on this first point defense. Oh my god. My rookie of the year. Well played by Donghack. Shu is pissed. Yeah, this this would be my face as well. <laughs> Shu's face right now is... How lose? I literally need the back line and we kill them multiple times. I live, I find kills, I sleep things. How lose? seeing uh, even when the fights look lost it all right over to dorado we're back to business i mean uh, you can see that shoe face thinking i can't do more that dude every support player has been in that in that position before where it's just like couldn't i can't do more what do you want from me check for gold medals moment yeah check for bronze damage as anna oh this tracer jumps he dies that soccer jumps there for a quick second. All right, Pelican back on the Echo. Happy on the Tracer. This pretty much shows that there's... Give them a little bit more access to that high ground. Okay. I, li I like the Echo. I talked about this earlier, that I think Echo is better in maps like Dorado. I think being able to play on the high grounds. Sombra's not bad. I don't dislike Lip playing the Sombra here, but I think I would say this is an Echo favored map. Echo now, obviously, pretty scary. Prospect for Donghack. You notice that the healing's coming in very quickly. They're pushing the cart, which I don't... Oh, Fielder. Oh, he jumped into the stickies as well. Nice play. Oh, where are you going, Donghack? You don't have the healing to be able to take this duel. 
and Pelican knows it. He's like, bro, what are you doing? Teams and comps even in the past have struggled with here on Dorado, especially on first point. So having an echo and Oh, Stalker gets the win on a happy. Happy's getting kind of the business from Stalker so far in this series on Tracer. Easy kill for an echo like Pelican is now they've got the payload moving. Are they gonna get cap for this? That's all because Pelican and uh Happy were pushing the cart so far. Dude, Shu gets caught behind. Stalker sticks Shu. Oh, Stalker's so good. I can't believe only 82% of you would say that Shu, uh, Stalker would be your MVP. I understand it, but like still, man. Oh, he's so good. Maybe it's just an oversaturated role. There's so many great Tracer players, it's hard to see, like, or feel like he is that much more valuable than others. But Lip, and that's really it, but Lip. See, but Lip's dead, you know? Stalker, save us. Houston, what a big opening now. Whip shot on a fearless makes it a little bit harder for him to get this one started off in the way he'd like. The Chio, oh, Happy gets filled. There we go. Happy needs to come alive on this tray. So, oh, Dong Hack gets slept. Clean play by the Outlaws. That should be it. We're going to get there for sure. Shu obviously parting with the nano boost in that fight, but Houston with 425. Aren't there like 10, 10 candidates? Yeah. I would love to know how the, the sleep happens on the lip there, right? I don't think... I think it, realistically, there's probably like four or five players who could get the MVP at this point. Why would you not be in stealth there? Maybe it's a scenario where like Shu just kind of like bumps into him. Just like an auto react. Like the, the reaction time is so good that he's able to land that sleep on potentially a stealth Sombra. I mean, Decay MVP. Honestly, Decay has played like crazy this year. Decay Tracer goes kind of nuts. To spy check there, he almost pushes into enemy territory just going with that file. Catching lip early again would be huge for him. Here we go creeping across the window, still are those. Oh, Pelican holding on. Healed up. Dog hack a little low here, a little probably concerned. Oh, nice stick. Dude, Stalker is just sticking to the world right now. Oh, Pelican, maybe just on the corner. It looked like it was like almost on a violet on the corner here, but maybe violet dodged it. And I think Pelican is actually right, right behind them as they were going to go try and take the high ground. Uh, because yes, it is very rare, especially, I mean, well, even with this high ground, right? I mean, just in general, see a trace to get a stick on it. Wait, when did Lip EMP? Wait, wait, oh, wait. Just wait. in general, because it may... So throws a bubble down, lets his team top him. What? Was that a stick? On Pelican, or maybe just on the... Was that a map? Throws a bubble down, lets his team top him. Oh, he hit the Tracer and Tracer recalled. I guess Stalker wasn't ready, but that was not a great EMP once again. I didn't even notice the EMP happen. It's because the Stalker Pulse Bomb happened at the same time. Shit, okay, well, that's not great for the rain now. Because that's like a big tool that they need for fights. Now you're going to have to like nano like Stalker or Dong Hack and hope they can find value. Back to the skies and find it. You are walking a little tightrope here. Just playing right on the edge. They know if Atlantic... Oh, wow. They're going to be asking for a fight. Focusing beam. Oh, Fearless gets him. Wow, that was a good dive. The Pelican, like, dive bombs have been wild. Oh, he gets punished for it, though. It's not great if you're the Outlaws. It's not the worst thing in the world. Is Violet going to try and rally? Now that you don't have a Pulse Bomb as well, I think it's like you should. Pelican goes over to the Sombra. Violet's still holding this rally. It's so good that he's holding this rally. Oh, Violet gets Stalker as well. Damn, okay. Houston kind of schmoving right now on this. I think, yeah, I think you just rally here. Oh, yeah, goodbye, Dong Hack. I will remember you. Does disengage, but what are they What are they doing? Atlanta's just getting choked out here. Oh, that's not the pulse bomb I would have gone for out of all of those. Oh, well, nice. Lip CMPs were terrible this series. They haven't been great so far in this. Like, he's had a couple of good ones, but yeah, if it doesn't feel like he's getting his usual level of value. Oh, right, Lip has another EMP. And that sort of goes back to what I was saying, right? When Lip used that EMP, there's like a domino effect there of like, because Lip doesn't have the EMP, they don't have the response to what the Outlaws are doing, which then like has this trickle down effect to them losing the second point. Like, obviously, if he had EMP'd and they hit the Pulse Bomb, that is what it is, but... Seemed like a pretty crazy decent Donk Hack just dying for free? Oh, now Lip can't even EMP. That's... Ooh, that's not a great way to lose the first half. I would have understood that if there was an EMP, right? Like, the timing's good if Lip EMPs there. Maybe Lip decides not to, and Donk Hack doesn't get the memo. And then dives, which is fine. 
Pelican's up to another EMP himself. Dude, Pelican Sombra is actually looking kind of nice. He's getting a lot of value. Ugh, as I say that, EMP goes out. Chio does have to use the rally, but didn't feel like the follow-up was there to really take any of the players out. I think if you hold here, Lip EMP. Oh, yeah, that's a nice EMP from Lip. That's what you want. Maybe just as well. He was forced to hold on to it there. That's a definite fight win for Atlanta. So even with a little bit of a weird uh, first fight, so to speak, right, where Dung Hag dives in deep, potentially thinking that Lip is going to set up an EMP, uh, the EMP from Lip is still extremely good there as uh, people get funneled in towards where that, like, mini health pack is, that little hallway. Lip hits a huge uh, EMP, and then they're able to finish off three. All right. That's a scary moment when you see when you only see the like caution marker, but you don't really know exactly where the pulse bomb is, like landed. Oh wow, that's an early primal by Dong Hack. No, I think Dong Hack was trying to hold aggressively, so I don't. I get it, but uh, that's really bad. Phyllis is now in. Zippity zapping. Oh, wow. Great play. Just nothing shoot a fielder can do. Oh, Dong Hack's in trouble now as well. Oh, that... As I said, another one where, like, that goes back to Dong Hack getting his ultimate forced. Oh, Mano Chio is apparently kind of nice. Oh, that's a problem. That nade by Shu is crazy strong. Oh, now Violet's got the, got the problems. The Houston Outlaws look very, very well drilled now, and Donghak gets absolutely punished for the last three fights of the round. I mean, shit. some big plays from Houston Outlaws, big nades, big plays. But yeah, just a couple of ultimates by the wayside for Atlanta really sort of led to that trickling of uh, objective. They bounce back with a completion here on their offense. So Stalker will come out here on the widow. Violet the goat. Violet's definitely one of the goats. I don't know if he's definitely not the goat. For me, Prophet is that uh, the goat. I would say I would say Violet is my support goat. He's been around for so long. Obviously, Fielder's kind of nipping at his heels at this point, but who's the tank goat? Smurf, Choi Hyobin. Hanman's getting there in the same like vein as Fielder. Fearless, yeah, Fearless is a big one. Fearless also did go 0 in 40, so. Not really sure exactly how, but the outlaws who do not give up the high ground, right? So you still see, you know, just when Fearless jumps up there, right? Violet's still controlling that high ground there with Shu. They don't give it up, and the cart just kind of stuck now underneath that tunnel. Super better? I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of good options for tank. Oh, wow. Stalker just fucking disappears. Alright, alright, alright. No more go talk chat. Focus up. There's just been some weird picks for Atlanta Rain. And Lips charging EMP slowly once again. Actually, a bio that hits Dong Hack and he gets hacked. He's going to be able to live for a little bit, but you know, these ultimates, you could use them and cycle them uh, and really make it difficult for Atlanta Rain to get that payload moving again. That's what they want. They want to be able to settle into this kind of rhythm. It's ridiculous. They haven't been forced apart with EMP. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That was really well played by Chio. I actually think the dive was good. I think the issue was that Chio was so ready for it. The fact that he had already disengaged into the small room. Wow. They EMP into the Violet Rally and just massacre him. Wow, good. well played by the rain. Fields does find Fielder. Oh, he, does he have Primal? He doesn't. They have no healers. Well, Elena has Chio. If they can get Chio... Wow, Fearless is keeping them in this fight right now. Even if Fearless dies, they're in a pretty good spot because Pelican recalls, Happy can hold the line, and Shu and Violet should be back soon. Alright, Dong Hack, it's time to make your money. He's got Primal Rage. Ooh, I don't like that jump from Dong Hack. 
Oh wow, that's a good stick though. Looks like they were able to escape, but Stalker comes up clutch with Yeah, Donghak has the primal. But I think because they've gotten Violet down, it doesn't really matter. He's actually just gonna die to the damage because he can't be seen by Shu. And then Donghak cuts off the healing. Oh, still, so yeah, I mean you do you do buy some time here for the outlaws, so you do dwindle the clock down. Uh, pretty significantly. All right. Three thirteen to get through this. Saw too much time though for their Atlanta rain. Like that, that first point cap took them what three minutes. So now the Houston should be able to get a pretty good setup. They can probably stem the bleeding, putting Pelican onto that Sombra, drop the EMP. She was getting up to another rally. He was alive for so long. You have to burn significant clock. I wish Stalker was on the World Cup team. I think at this point, like, no shade against uh, Sparkle. This is more just like Stalker's been playing incredibly well. I think if they could do it again, they would probably put the same roster but with Lip Stalker as the DPS duel and then put the back line in the tanks of the Dallas Fuel or last year Dallas Fuel. Ooh, looking for the EMP. But I, I like I agree with the like I think field um, Sparkle has a lot more experience and I absolutely understand why they went for Sparkle over Stalker. And that's it. One of the primary reasons that uh, Sparkle is in the lineup is because Rush is the head coach and Rush obviously has a soft spot for. And there's a, there's a lot of pre-existing synergy that comes along with that as well. Would you put Violet and of Finn? I think everyone would put a lot of other flex supports over Finn at this point. Finn is kind of like Finn's not even playing in scrims. And not even playing in the Overwatch League at this point. I think there's a there's a lot of other options they'd rather have. But I don't think it really matters. Chi and Fielder are going to be the two to play. EMP goes out from Pelican. Take down Stalker. Oh, did Violet heal Shu? That's going to hurt them. Violet does have the rally, and they can just probably just stay on the high ground here. Sparkle's re apparently really good at in-game leading and coming, and that's it, right? Like, I, there's probably a justification of why Sparkle is in, and Sparkle is definitely not a bad choice by any means. But if you are saying who has been the better player this year, Sparkle or Stalker, you have to go with Stalker. Very patient on his. And this is the one kill is probably enough to work with now. Beelis already used primals. All right, Violet's got the rally now. Chio's just going to hold this one as long as he can. Violet, it, the, the longer they can wait this ride, this fight out, the better this rally is going to be here from Chia later. Donghak gets hacked. All right, now here comes the rally from Chia. Like, how do you fight into this view of the Outlaws? Happy has to stick Chia. Oh, they get Stalker with a nade and a burst. Dude, Happy has to throw this Pulse Bomb at somebody. They literally don't win this. And he throws it at the very end. I feel like Happy needs, like, holds onto his Pulse Bombs for a little bit too long. Like, I understand the percentage chance of that Pulse Bomb is, like, dumb low. But I feel like they just don't win that fight against the Atlanta Reign if he doesn't stick someone big. Like, if he, he has to try and stick, like, Fielder or Chio to win that round. You know, maybe maybe a fight here at the start, and then you get one underneath that bridge, and then one just kind of trickling out of spawn. It's still Houston, I feel like, has a significant advantage in terms of, like, where they have in terms of clock and then where the payload is. If they can get an early pickoff here, this would be huge. I don't think they can chase Dog Hack, but being able to force him back and All right, another Pelican EMP. Minute and a half. Win condition for the Outlaws here if they're thinking about the long term defense already down to a minute 27. It's a huge win because you actually, you know, you stop the payload here. Pelican isn't full health. So if you want to get I'm not sure how I feel about that. All right. Definitely can. See where Pelican might want to use like bait. I think they're just trying to bait them in. Yeah, reactively, right? Yeah. Pelican, okay. EMP translocates out. Both Sombras actually. Uh, oh, so EMP and Fearless. Do not like that EMP. Okay. Unless the entire intention was to just force out the nano. Oh my, doesn't matter. That is bad news bears for the Outlaws and they cannot stagger this out. Fearless dies late. Shu, oh Shu. Bro, Shu when in a 1v1 when he's running away is like the best player in the world. That's such an important kill. That literally stops the entire rain push. Like rain aren't even going to fight this. They're going to disengage the first opportunity they get. They're gonna rally Chio. No, I don't agree with that. Then they committed the primal rage. That was a fumble by Atlanta. 100%. You don't have your tracer. They have close spawns. They're never gonna have the damage to clear, clear that out. Like, I would have preferred to see them disengage, rally if the outlaws overextended, but they just like stood there and then took the rally to the face. Uh, sorry, the EMP to the face. 
losing Shio, and Shio and Mitch actually had used the rally and had the benefits of the Nano there, but he gets burnt down so fast. They lost Nano too? Yeah. Oh my god, that's so bad. Oh, he missed the Winston and stuck the Brig! That was calculated. Calculated. Happy sword in the tea leaves. Yeah, there you go, Houston. Yeah, and that, as you said, that all came from shoot. Wait, what's the stack card? I want to see the stack card. Oh, yeah, look at that. Shoot if. Damn, shoe is nasty, bro. Oh, Esperanza? There ain't no way. I think Atlanta might be unbeatable on Esperanza. I, I actually think Atlanta's unbeatable on this map. Have, have they? I wonder if they've ever lost Esperanza. Because this is like the best Sombra map by far. Winston, Tracer, Sombra, uh, Dive, that both of these teams are so good on. Um, padded numbers? Bro, I wish people would pad in my games. I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the Sombra matchup here as well. There, there ain't no such thing as padding in Overwatch unless you're a Moira player. And, said that one time where they, like, didn't and even then, you can justify the value of those numbers. Which is really rare for the Atlanta rain. So, uh, see if they can kind of get that cleaned up going into this map. Oh, Pelican just got fucking meta gamed. <laughs> that was that was kind of toxic by Lip. Didn't even take the fight. Didn't even try and charge any char thing. Didn't put any pressure. Literally just shoots it and insta translocates. It's one of the things that Lip does that is underappreciated on Sombra is the way that he plays the translocated game in the mirror. Looks like it's just going to be Pelican to get a touch here. Now Fearless is going to come down. Can't quite see Pelican though, so has to wait for that opportunity to present itself. Yeah, Donghak wasn't invested, really taking the high ground completely. Getting some push progress early, it looks like it's hit Atlanta. See how fast they forward. jump on lip there? I mean, he gets down to like z basically zero HP. Oh, Fearless! Fearless, Dangerous. Violet, and shoe right in his face. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Oh, he held that nade for just a second too long. That was unfortunate. I, he couldn't really see the health bar and feel it, so I think he thought he had him. Definitely did not. Yeah, as I mean, now you're going to have the Atlanta ring get control of that bot yet again. And Atlanta, do you have a 100% win rate on this map? Would not surprise me at all. Who is it who I caught? I cast an Atlanta game yesterday. Who did they play against? They, oh, Toronto Defiant? Dude, that shit was not close. <laughs> that was not close. EMP's good, but the fall oh, that nade follow up by Fielder is huge. Wait, are they really not gonna kill Shu? They just couldn't get in the room. Ugh, that wasn't great for the rain. Yeah, but they're not giving up. Oh, I mean, now maybe they are. I was going to say, Atlanta's not really giving up any of the map, right? Just constantly taking control of this high ground away from the Houston Outlaws. And, and maybe the idea is to hear Trent get... Yeah, the seven point circle route was wild. That was a wild map. Get the bot moving back towards about halfway across the map. It was a fun one. It was a fun one. Yeah, already All right, Atlanta have a lot of ultimates, just no EMP. Pelican, what do we got? What's he doing? Why are Pelican coming out of stealth shooting for like three bullets and then going back? What for? Fearless knows that uh, getting through this high ground is going to be the big issue, and it's why Atlanta feel comfortable enough giving some ground. And, and now when EMP the Outlaws go in with this EMP match, uh, you know, they're going Poke to... Poke damage? What? Plus the rally on the other side, right? They're EMP's dong hack just instantly gets nanoed. I feel like they have to see this coming. Yeah, for, unfortunately, they did layer both of these. Oh, no! Ray, lay rally there from Shivai. Oh, my God. Violet lives. Shio can hold on to it for as long as he likes here as the Atlanta Rain are not under enough pressure to warrant it. Shio Bash and Dog Hacky's a little low. Fearless went for Primal, but no targets really offering themselves up here. Pushbot's already on its way. Oh, and wow. Insta counter EMP on a Fearless. Oh, that's just too much damage. He even had Nano Boost through that. Fearless gets crumpled by four players. Yeah, and one of the worst parts about that is 
Uh, you know, Fearless jumps in, you kind of have an idea that EMP is going to come out, but it's a biotic grenade as well. Like, basically... That's honestly one of the things that really determines the best teams in the world, is, like, the teams that have the aggressive anti-nades on the dives. Because that really is one of the things that you need the most. If you can hit an Ana or a Brig, it almost guarantees the value of the dive as long as the dive doesn't completely suck. They really, like, that's what makes Fielder shoe like, so great. Ooh, we found another Pelican Translocator. Lip coming up to another EMP. Like, it's so hard to get this bot out from under this sort of bridge. Which game of Ilias was Sombra playing the TP and Spawn? That was Seeker. Seeker dropped his translocator in Spawn, dropped an EMP, and then, like, instant translocated back to Spawn. Wow. That was a late commitment. Atlanta have no supports. Oh, he didn't get the primal rage. That's really not great there from Atlanta. Atlanta had both support ultimates and they when they fell. Pretty much as soon as he gets it, and yes, Violet's rally keeps himself alive. You know, uh, even though it looked like he was quite low in that EMP. You know, once it landed, looks like Doghack just went for shoe. All three of the push maps have awful contest all points. I don't know if you can affect. You can't that effectively contest from spawn on this map compared to New Queen Street and Colosseum. Like Colosseum is obviously the worst for it, but. Pelican gets lip is huge. This is falling away from Atlanta Rain pretty quickly. This this map could be really bad for them. If they like drop a good EMP here, get the capture. Ooh, Primal, eh? I that was I guess I don't know if I agree with that one. If there's no way he kills the Sombra, right? Who did Pelican EMP? Whoa, 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 whoa. Did he solo EMP? Oh, he hit Donghack and Stalker Force. Okay, that actually wasn't a bad EMP. I just didn't hear it. And Fearless is just on a different page. So it doesn't feel like... That felt very out of sync there from the rain. Oh, sorry, from the Outlaws. Because Fearless was just going so deep. That, and that wasn't important. Like, I was saying there, they, this map could, like, easily slink away from the rain. Now it's the complete opposite. Now, all of a sudden, rain are in the lay lead. They Chio didn't have to pop the rally to turn that fire. Like, that missed the EMP and, like, I guess, uncoordinated dive with Fearless popping the primal. Fearless just kept doing a nice job going into that middle of that choke where the bot was, putting down a bubble, preventing that line of sight, and then putting down the bubble and then popping the primal to try and displace everybody. Uh, just not able to pick up any kills with it, right? Uh, you know, Happy picks up one, but Donghack does a tremendous job with the benefits of the Nano and his own Primal uh, to just push everybody else in the outlook. Okay, everyone's just standing around. Front spawn re-established for Atlanta. Happy going the roundabout route. Whoa. <laughs> That's your teammate. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he just gets got. You can see it on Happy's face. He's so upset about that. Chasing the tracer down, and that ended up being to his detriment. Yes, and you know, now we see the that's such a feels bad. He went from like a hundred to zero, like pretty quickly there. Even though they oh, big nade on a violet, have that close spawn, and you're going to be able to be set up with that EMP plus rally. Atlanta don't even really want to force his objective right now too much. You're going to be in a fantastic spot, but it looks like the, the, the range is back up. Maybe they want to play because look at how, how bad of a position that shoe and violet are in. Yeah, they literally just solo EMP pelican. They're like, fuck it, what are you going to do? Oh, wow, dangerous. They just use the EMP to just solo kill pelican there. I mean, I feel like that's worth it. It's fine. 
Liv is sending a message, yeah. Sombra diff. Oh, that was ambitious. Yeah, I I don't really know why Violet rallied that. I wonder if we didn't see something off screen, but I don't think that was necessary. The pulse bomb went wide. There was no real follow up on top of that. Oh, that's a good EMP. I don't think it needed to, but with Donghak getting the primal, well, I actually think maybe it did. Well, happy finding filter is huge. Oh, happy didn't go to the mega. Oh, nice dong hack. Did he rally because he had a trace come in? Yeah, but the pulse bomb went wide. Like, why do you rally after a pulse bomb goes wide? There's no reason to pop it. So you use the nano, right? Once the EMP comes in, you lose one player right away. Uh, and it wants the Ooh. nano kind of like wears off and hack purple uh, uh, rain, even though you have that massive ultimate that comes through from the outlaws yeah like Atlanta don't even need to force the objective more they just want to stay on the high ground geofield already back up there lip charging EMP oh I like the uh, aggressive nano I don't think they're gonna get anything from it though oh that's a problem now they are. How many of them are under this room? Because Thorker has a pulse bomb. Oh no, the backline just ran. Lift with another EMP. Final fight, actually. Holy shit. It's already final fight. Yeah, the supports are playing so far away. If the Houston Outlaws keep pushing this bot further forward, yeah, they're moving too far away from their supports. Yeah, they don't push the car. No, 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 no. Why did they push the car? Stalker! <laughs> Silly stalker. Literally pushed the cart into the outlaws. But it literally doesn't matter. They're so far ahead. This high ground is brutal. It's a, it's probably like one of the hardest points of the map. And you can see like, I think another team that leverages it really well is the Valiant. It's like one of the reasons I think Valiant is so good at Esperanza is because they just understand if we can get Seeker and our backline onto this high ground, it is very difficult for them to be able to get us off because there's aren't there's not a good enough routes to get up there the only way you can get up there is either go down the left corridor which is like a or like the uh the little mega fork which is kind of like a death sentence go all the way around the right which is also a death sentence or walk on the low ground which is also a death sentence so it's like there's no good options to really dislodge the opposition team so you either have to use a lot of ultimates to dislodge them or just don't anything could happen here we may see this jungle queen comp. Looks like the All right. Houston Outlaws versus Atlanta Rain. Outlaws going with the Junker Queen Kiriko Moira in the final hours. Don't want to take the Winston Tracer Sombra Mirror. And we've seen a bunch of teams do this. Whether the Queen just sort of sits on the point and just sort of fucks with the Winston a little bit. And against Moira Kiriko, who do you dive? Like, you kind of have to dive the Junker Queen. Like, the Junker Queen's the most exploitable character on the Outlaw setup. But if you have to try and focus the Queen, that's a one-way trigger to found your town. Because if you don't kill the Queen quick enough, then the rest of the team is free and you just lose. Yeah, and then you, they, they hit a nade and then you just Suzu. And literally everyone has a way of clearing it except for the Queen. And then even the Kiriko can clear the Queen if they need to. And you have the Shout to mitigate the effectiveness of the dive. Oh, Violet dies. Ooh, I don't know what happened there. Oh, Shu's dead. He uses the TP and the Suzu. I mean, Dealers constantly was looking physically looking back at his supports just to try and see if any flankers were happening. Am I the only one who's not in love with the Moira Kiriko? It definitely works on certain situations. I... I feel like it doesn't work at the highest level, but hey, maybe it'll turn around in this round. Is this something you're committed to to the entire round? Uh, or do you feel like it was something maybe... Deals or passive ultra? Because he has nothing to shoot, right? Like, the queen doesn't really have a lot to shoot at or a lot to focus. And if the fight never really broke down, it just felt like eventually they got isolated and died. It shouldn't work against the rain. It can if you get, like, a couple of good picks, a couple of good fights. They already walked back to the point, Matt. Yeah. It's awkward. Make no mistake. It's an early EMP. I almost don't know if Atlanta Rain were expecting that. 
going to be a nano though on Dong Hack here though. He's intended target. Looks like they slipped away by a translocation. And rally is Geo Rally? They really want to win this. Be conversion on this good start for the fight. Dong Hack and Fearless end up getting traded out. So not where Houston wanted to find themselves here. Maybe still awkward with this support lineup. And a Lippy MP could seal the deal. Shu almost preemptively. Suzu's himself. Lip does not EMP dog. Well, they got the cap because of the call. Oh, wow. Nice EMP onto Pelican. This is hard to fight into if you're the rain. Kitsune Rush is just so much extra value. It's certainly a rally of all time. Yeah, the rally didn't really do much. It mitigated the call, but like, it didn't need it. You kind of want to use the rally to win a fight. Oh, Happy, why did he walk out of the bubble? There's a pulse bomb should he need it on Fearless, but looks like pushing him away is more than enough. For the to be Are they going to try and contest this? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Fearless gets primal from that as well. All right. They eventually lose the point. It looks like Fearless maybe like jumped up and like got like out of the box of the point that nobody else has gotten there to touch. So they do end up. Oh, Pelican down again. Pelican had the EMP as well. They kind of needed him to stay alive. Yeah, this is not looking great for the Outlaws. They have the coal, but Lip has EMP. Like, they see the fade or they, they catch Violet off guard. They can EMP this coal pretty easily. This point is so hard to flip. It's because there's so many safe places to stand. Like, it's such a big point. There's a lot of cover. For just a second, right? Like, got up onto that, you know, pillar in the middle and just kind of got on the platform just a brief second. Oh, they get Geo. Good EMP onto the back line. Ooh. Oh, wow. You didn't get the fade off. I thought it was... He was gonna. Oh, Shu goes down as well. Oh, this is not a good fight. Yeah, I'm not in love with the Moira Kiriko as well. Like, it feels, you know, it feels very cheesy. You know what I mean? And like, the Queen didn't do anything. Like, I think it would work against some teams that are less coordinated with the Wits to Trace a Sombra Dive, but against the Rain, I just don't. I don't think you're gonna win most of those ones. That's a rough one for Houston. You come out on a composition trying to like catch them off guard, or maybe you think you're countering them at the start, and that doesn't exactly work. Uh, and then for a, a brief period of time, it looked like you were actually gonna. Don't worry, they run it again. It's actually crazy that they get booty bopped on City Center, and they're like, "Let's run it again on Gardens." Fuck it, we ball. Right, just getting off the point, just letting the point flip. Nothing you could do about it. And that's a scary prospect again now. Lip deciding that this is his time to show just strong mental confidence in your own gameplay. I respect it. Between him and every other somber player in the league. Also, the darn thing that Hussey could do about it. Point feels pretty different though, yeah. I'm going to keep him down, keep him quiet under the thumb. So come out with a Junker Queen again, but this time it's Junker Queen with the May in the mix. Stalker's on the Echo this time. The May is an interesting look for Pelican. Like, what is the May doing here? Maybe this is literally just like, once again, another character who can protect themselves. Like, everyone is not isolatable for the Outlaw, so you don't want to play, uh, you don't want to play, um, Echo because you're not going to get healing. Play the Kiriko Moira. Don't really want to play Sombra, I guess, so he just plays the May. Wow, they get the first flip for Houston is a big deal. Oh, Phyllis is dead. Yeah, you get below half against an Echo, you're going to die. To get rid of an enemy tank. That's dirty stuff from Stalker. This Echo now is something that the Outlaws tried in the first map. Oh, Pelican didn't put himself under the wall. Yes, Pelican looks like he's just he was to trying to stay in the in behind the wall, but he put it too close to himself. Looked like potentially maybe ice blocks a little bit earlier. So didn't have it there towards the end. Nice sticky bombs there on the shoe is be a flip here for the Atlanta Rain. So using that echo to access that high ground, a uh, huge there. Phyllis right? is so doing nothing on this queen. Maybe it'd be a little bit harder to access that. With it feels so they go with the real bad pays off. watching it just like run around. Still no coalescence from Violet, which is odd considering Phyllis ultimate is ostensibly high. Phyllis swagging out. I don't know if that's true. I, I don't think getting absolutely farmed is swagging. Oh, wow, that was so much damage on a Violet. He was in an orb and zapping people. Oh, yeah. Houston ain't looking so hot right now. Do you feel like the Outlaws needed to do this? Like, needed to, needed to kind of try and play these counter comps? Yeah, like, I don't Just play the mirror. I don't play the mirror. Either. Like, yeah, you, you, you've won maps on the mirror. I, I don't think... I don't think it's crazy where you... you Time to turn off the VOD. Congratulations, Atlanta Rain, on the win... 
on the lossless season, sorry. No one can bring him down. Shoot, wow, shoot dead there as well. It's pretty generous. That's a pretty generous stick they got there. The the classic tossed um angle of whoop bloop. <laughs> got the toesies, yeah, it got the toesies and it stuck. That was a that was that was generous by the game. Oh, we we know who Team Four likes. That's a huge pick as well. Like with only Cole and Pulse Bomb, you turn that. You guys just don't, yeah, you guys just don't get how skilled Happy is. He, he, he knows how to toss those. Wow, they're going to do the slip. The swap, sorry, swip. Lip over to the Sombra. Stalker onto the Tracer. I don't hate this against the, like, Echo is not that good against this comp. Like, it kind of feels hard to punish anything, execute anything. They use a dupe. Hard to be stealthy with such an immense bulk, I suppose. Katsuna Rush dropped here by Shu. It's going to be a primal from Donghak. Instantly, if we see the target, it looks like someone doesn't have a coalescence. Oh, Violet. Do you get the Mega? Oh, he got the Mega. That's so bad. That's so bad for Donghak. Oh, that's... That's not... That's... That feels bad. That was a really good run from Violet. Ooh, Murdered Stalker. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be hard to get a big value, you think, out of the Rampage with just kind of like a trying to find players. If he hit that dagger, it would have been sick. Oh, well, Lip's got to be careful. If he gets uh, uh, Kunite in the head, he could have died. The survivability of Moira, right? Being able to fade, throw a healing orb for yourself, the lifesteal. I mean, uh, so difficult to take out that support. A lot of pressure on Shu. Violet can only help him for so long. Yeah, Shu and Violet just fighting for their lives out here. Queen ult. Hit Stalker and feeds. Big. The call is going to be big, though. They traded 3 3. This is better. Tracer Sombra. Yeah, Tracer Sombra Moira. I absolutely take the Tracer Sombra Moira in this situation. How do you kill anything? Oh, they gave the flip up. That was a really big mistake there from Houston. That gave Atlanta so much more time because that flip goes through. If that flip doesn't come through, Stalker probably has to feed to touch. Oh, now the EMP. Oh, Suzu goes down during the EMP. Oh, that's nothing. That, that is Sombra Swap didn't pay off. Should by like dice to Stalker Donghack. There's no way f Outlaws fumbled that, right? Dude, if they just didn't give up the point, this wouldn't have happened. That wouldn't have happened. It's okay. Outlaws have ultimates. They're going to have the EMP. They're going to have the... They're going to have the Kitsune Rush. That's not the worst. As as Matt said, Chio's getting up to the rally. Stalker Pulse Bomb. It really has to come down to Stalker Pulse Bomb and Chio Rally. If Chio gets a big value from this rally... They want to force these ults out of Houston early. Donghacks can't get EMP'd here. Oh, Chio! That is a... Uh, I have no idea how Chio got... Chio got erped. Shoe moment? Did he hit a kunai from across the map? Oh yeah, he just disappears. You don't even see it. He, uh, can I headshot? Winston's at Moira suck. Damn, that's that's kind of crazy. Yeah, that was that was all Violet. I think we all agree. Have you not seen it match in its entirety? I've seen bits and pieces of it. Like, I've seen this point. Uh, I don't remember that moment happening, but I've seen this map. I watched, like, sporadically of this one the first time. The Sojourn should be... Obviously, Sombra are very impactful all the time, but in the way these fights may kick off, like, in neutral, especially in how things go... Sojourn versus the Sombra. Elena likes playing the Sombra here. I think it can be hard, but they make it work. That's such a good... Dude, that Vortex was so good. Forcing Chio to the low ground, he just lost all momentum. Just dies because of it. 
Houston copying Glad's comp for this point? Oh, no, this is this is everyone's comp. I think everyone plays this comp, don't they? Fucking Valiant play this. A lot of people have been playing the, this uh this exact comp. You see Lip here towards the end, right? He, he's only really just kind of like putting damage down from the side and whatnot. Yeah, as he goes over the Sojourn. Donghak ins this point? I think Donghak really... I don't think Atlanta are that strong in the Romatra rush. Both these teams are it's definitely not the strength that they have. It's just that consistent up front damage and then just that one shot potential with that... Lip over to the Sojourn. It's too important to not, uh, not to have it. You're like, oh, they finally got Lip off the Sombra. I, yo, Lip on... Lip on Sojin still fucks. That does not that does not give you an advantage. Maybe at least to him. Guy sees a 2,000 hertz. Immortality field being thrown up here, giving the outlaws a way to fight back. Oh, then Lip gets happy as well. Lip is laying them low. Oh, oh, oh. It's a question for Lip. That was just done. The trade, but it'll favor his lancer as they're back on the point. Uh, and right there, I mean, you see why the soldier is so good. Shoe clears, yeah. Well, that was a little bit of a whiff there from Lip. He had the confidence until he didn't. Lip is just that guy on almost everything. Lip is just that guy. As you said, as a lot of people have said, he's probably the leading candidate for MVP. Over the course of this map, Houston have eight less kills in total than the Atlanta Reign. Blizzard? Whoa, that would have been nice if he hit that. In terms of the kills, final blows. Okay. I don't. We didn't really see anything that happened in this fight, except that Fearless and Dong Hacker just running people down. But Fearless wins the one v one. Dude, another great vortex by Fearless. I feel like Fearless is oh, like primarily using it on Chio. As soon as he sees Chio, throws it at his feet and just messes him up. And that was what Annihilation, Amplification Matrix, Blizzard from the rain, and they didn't find anything. <clears throat> Not allow Atlanta Rain to take the lead. That's oh, happy early rail. Pops the overclock, just fucking murders him. And Donghack's gonna die late. You, that's a good play. Violet beat is all they got. She went Matrix actually is coming up. Can Lip save them again with the overclock? That is really the question. It wouldn't be the first time. It definitely won't be the last time. He like opened up when he made the first switch over to Sojin. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, good sound barrier by Violet. It's going to mitigate a lot of that damage. Now Lip's kind of alone. Dude, there's just a lip in their back line. Now lip's kind of alone. Like, oh, oh, wow. Huge trade by Stalker. Oh, God. Huge trade by Stalker. Dude, Stalker gets some big picks there. I don't know if anyone else is going to be able to follow up, though. And the Outlaws take it. Three to two. Ending... No, he's snapping the Atlanta Rain win streak. They've been crushing it. Look at how much it means to them, bro. They're so happy. That's a crazy bounce back from Houston Outlaws in this stage because they were 0-2 prior to this. Taking down Atlanta Rain. They're definitely a better team in the Ramatra Rush. Like, a million percent, they are better in the Ramatra Rush. Um, but they were able to win some of the maps, like playing those dive, here, uh, dive comps. They're able to go back and forth, like with Atlanta and those comps. Anything can happen. Um, I would say my concern for the Outlaws is going to remain in their consistency, like the fear of consistency. Like, yes, the Outlaws have gone close against Atlanta before winner's bracket in um, the midseason madness. So are they going to be able to pull it off? Are they going to be able to keep getting up these wins? They're probably going to qualify for the playoffs regardless of what happens at this point. But uh, that's the series. It was one of the best series we've had in a long time. Very back and forth. We learned that the Atlanta Reign can bleed thank you very much for watching i'm going to be doing probably the san francisco shock taking on the london spitfire as the next pod review and obviously a cnn weekly recap happening later this week keep an eye out for those and thank you very much for watching love you all and i will see you guys next time